the home improvement space. Joining me here in studio is TD Ameritrade Network contributor Jenny Horn. Still joined by Kevin Hanks, the co-host of Fast Market. And joining us from likefoil.com is the VP of Research, Megan Brantley. Jenny, this is a space that uh, really saw an extraordinary amount of demand pull forward throughout the pandemic. And I think it's really important for us to come back and continue to check on these, these spaces and see how they're hanging in there now that things are coming back to normal. Right, and actually this is one space that it seems like sort of this growth is continuing to 2021, even as the economy reopens. Momentum still looks fairly strong. Now, Home Depot is sort of the largest in this home improvement space, being the large, the world's actually largest home improvement chain specifically. But, you know, how the saying goes is a rising tide really does lift all boats, and we saw so many different names benefit, whether it's Wayfair, RH, Lowe's, of course, Home Depot, Williams-Sonoma. They really all got a surge just due to the fact that people were more interested in investing in their homes. And of course, we are in a red hat housing market. So if you buy a new home, you'd say be more interested in furnishing that home and updating that said home. Now, while Home Depot and Lowe's are two of the biggest names in U.S. retail, they only have about 30% of the home improvement market share. There are so many different other players in this space. Now, actually, analysts at B of A said that Home Depot commands about 17% of the home improvement market and Lowe's about 12. And the two have obvious advantages over their competition. Just their scale of alone leads to, of course, some deep access to inventory, as well as they both have grown their e-commerce presence over the last year. Now, Bank of America actually estimates that 2020 U.S. home improvement sales reached about $770 billion, which is equal to about the 20 largest economies in the world. So that is no small number, of course. But what everyone wants to know is, will this trend continue, of course, as the economy reopens? Our question throughout, you know, so many different sectors, like Alex just mentioned. And really, some trends look good. 70% of millennials say they're actually going to purchase a home within the next two to three years. So that could allude you to thinking that, say, this trend will continue as people continue buying new homes. But this is a, the biggest debate on social media this morning is, will home improvement continue even as people say get out of their homes and have more of a life? So that brings me to our first tweeter of the day, which is actually in response to a tweet saying, what is the stock you'd own for the next 10 years? And this tweeter says, I'd go with Home Depot. Doesn't matter if you are clueless or a home improvement pro. Home Depot is going to benefit, plus the U.S. houses are only getting older. And I actually thought to touch on that housing market, in the four-week period that ended in May 9th, median home sale prices jumped about 22% year over year. And Home Depot will, of course, benefit as people continue to buy new homes and continue to need to, say, update their homes. And with consumer spend on the rise and continuing to rise, people do have that more discretionary spend. And our next tweeter actually does discuss some of these expectations, but not as positive. Our next tweeter says Home Depot had a great first quarter and so will Lowe's. But is the home improvement party about to end? I think second quarter will be very good as well, but I'm not so sure about after that. So, Megan, I am so curious because I am one of these people that I invested more in, you know, redoing my apartment I rent, so I couldn't really, you know, I had to cap the, my limits of how much I was doing. But now, since I've gone back to the office, I just am not spending as much time there. I'm not really interested in, you know, painting my trim and doing all those bizarre things I was. So, is this trend in trouble? Or are, we, are we seeing this momentum here to stay? Yeah, so this one is really interesting. And this one, whenever we look at home improvement and mentions of people talking about, you know, making these renovations on their home, we're not comparing on a year over year basis because last year was such an outlier year. There were so many people talking about this that um, whenever you look at those year over year comps, it's, it's really not fair. Um, whenever we look at this versus 2019, we still see those mentions almost 10% higher. So there is some stickiness here. This is one of those cases where there is still a natural, you know, incline and increase whenever people are talking about renovating their homes. I think other trends that we're tracking as well support this. When we look at refinancing, for example, those mentions are 70% higher versus 2019. And so you have a lot of people taking advantage of good rates and then a lot of people then reinvesting in their existing home to do these updates and, you know, maybe renovate their kitchen or whatever area of the room they're looking at. We also have a lot of other trends that we're tracking. You have people who are moving. We have a lot of mentions of people who are moving, you know, out of the city and maybe into more rural areas. And so whenever you, whenever you see that happen, a lot of times you have a bigger area that you're going to fill versus, say, an apartment. And so I think that there are still these macro trends that are, you know, serving as tailwinds for names like Home Depot, for names like Restoration Hardware. But there's definitely a tempering in that growth rate, right? It's not quite as explosive as last year, but definitely still growing whenever you compare it over the long term and go back as far as 2019. 
you know, Megan and Jenny and Alex, I, I, I was reading an article that made me rethink Home Depot's stall out and why there may be some length to this run that Home Depot's having. And here's what I came up with. It was a fascinating article. Contractors in your home, right? That part of the home renovation actually really dropped off during the pandemic. You were willing to work on your house, but you weren't willing to have contractors come in and work on your house. So the professional part of home remodeling took a big hit. But now you're starting to see with the pandemic coming to a close, people are starting to let contractors in your house. Contractors reporting strong demand and backlogs that are growing. So that's why I think it's the professional aspect of Home Depot and Lowe's that may have these um, two brands having a little more legs than, than people thought with reopening. It's what the, the part of the economy in terms of redoing your home that you didn't do was having someone come in and work on your home. That's what may extend this rally in Home Depot, guys. When we're looking at this, Megan, and we try to tie everything together and we're, and we're really comparing these companies, they're all kind of looking at things from, from, from a little bit of a different perspective, and they were impacted a little bit differently as a result of the pandemic. Kevin talks about Home Depot and Lowe's. They, of course, have kind of a, a catch-all kind of a exposure to the space from the professional to the everyday person, e-commerce, in the store. But then you have companies like uh, Wayfair, for example, that are entirely e-commerce. You have companies like RH that are really, really targeting the highest kind of income bracket of, of kind of these publicly traded companies. Where do the kind of demographic trends and, and, and kind of uh, the things behind the scenes in terms of, of how we're actually gonna go to the store, what kind of income levels are, are willing to spend, how is that shaping up uh, when you're kind of analyzing this space? Yeah, so I think that this outlier grid that we've started to bring to you guys recently is really helpful to kind of unpack all of this. And the one that we're looking at today shows all of these companies on a quarter over quarter basis. So this is really gauging that near term momentum. And so you can see, and this is interesting, Kevin, that you bring up that point, you can see Home Depot's and Lowe's really accelerating and really outperforming in terms of demand growth. That's on that X axis. You can see both of these companies really starting to gain steam as the economies reopen. And as you mentioned, you know, a lot of this is really consumer facing. We may not necessarily get as much of the professional mentions as Kevin's talking about, but even consumers are turning to Home Depot's and Lowe's for those things um, like paint, like, you know, if they're staining their fence, if they're doing these outside projects and things of that nature that maybe doesn't cater as much to a Wayfair, for example. I think that from a sentiment perspective, you have to look at where Restoration Hardware is positioned on that grid. Look at that level of happiness. That's that Y axis. It's at the top. It is head and shoulders above most of its other peers. So it is providing a superior experience for, albeit maybe a smaller demographic or a smaller group of these high-end buyers. So if you're, if you're Restoration Hardware, you're really like where you're sitting from a consumer experience perspective because the majority, the overwhelming majority of consumers who are shopping with you are very, very happy. So I think that, you know, whenever we look at this chart, whenever we look at potential winners in this space, we really like where Restoration Hardware, how they're performing. We really like how Home Depots and Lowe's are gaining momentum, um, especially along these trends. And then on the flip side, we're a little bit more worried about a company, say like Wayfair, where we're starting to see that growth rate really slow down um, as consumers now have more options and, you know, they can decide, okay, do I want to order something online or do I just want to go ahead and go pick up something in the store and, you know, get what I need for my weekend project that I'm working on. So Megan, I have to know if supply chain plays any factor here because Wayfair, of course, doesn't really have these traditional brick and mortars where it's actually helping, I believe, so many of these big companies target Lowe's, Walmart, Home Depot, yeah. really because they have the ability to fulfill these order with all these different supply chain constraints we've seen. So is that weighing into here? Because I have seen on social media a little bit people complaining about not being able to get like their couch for like six months or rugs, like some of these <laughs> larger items, really. Yeah, I think you make a really good point. I think that's what's kind of dragging Wayfair's happiness a little bit lower is just these delays in shipping times. I know that, you know, anecdotally, I ordered some patio furniture from Wayfair and it took longer than I would have liked or longer than I would have expected to, you know, get those items in. In contrast, I bought 
was able to go that weekend and grab some things at Home Depot's and Lowe's that I needed. So I think that it really just deter depends on what the consumer is looking for. Wayfair does have a value prop in the, the fact that it has so many different types of items and it does have a perceived you know pricing advantage or pricing pro, I guess, working in its favor. However, there are some indications that maybe that, you know, that fulfillment ability isn't as strong as it could be. There's definitely some room for improvement there. And that's starting to be what is propelling the, the Home Depots and the Lowe's is that, you know, they can, you can order something online, but you have the option to just go and pick it up in store that day because they do have that expansive retail, just physical footprint. So Megan, I think we have to consider kind of the elephant in the room, which is another thing that Kevin brought up, which is the, the pretty substantial re, uh, repricing that we've seen in these names uh, as of yeah. late, particularly a Home Depot. Uh, restoration hardware to some extent sold off, but bouncing back a little bit quicker, let's say. Yeah. Um, we'd have to think that based off everything you've said so far, a company that's really, really interested in creating an experience, we know the restaurant aspect with an RH, they're gonna favor the environment of a reopened world. Something like Home Depot, we talked about, they, they're kind of insulated since they can fulfill orders from many different kind of areas, through e-commerce, through in the store, uh, the professional aspect. But how much has the sell-off impacted your guys' outlook on these names? Does it make it more attractive? And, and where do you stand on both Restoration Hardware or RH and, and Home Depot? I would say that I think we've been bullish on restoration hardware for quite some time and definitely with the levels of consumer happiness that we're recording um, that supports our existing position. I do think that Home Depot and Lowe's, the sell-up does could, you know, potentially present an opportunity for investors, especially on a long-term basis, because we are seeing that momentum and you know maybe some investors are thinking, maybe the market is thinking that there's going to be a decrease in demand and so far you know we're actually seeing some momentum, we're seeing some acceleration, so this could be um, a longer-term bullish opportunity for both of those names. Good stuff. Megan Brantley, the VP of Research at LikeFolio.com. Always a pleasure. Thanks for joining us. And really kind of a fascinating trend to continue to watch here is uh, maybe counterintuitive, I would say, uh, Jenny, to